Welcome back. So validation. Right now we are putting in some validations. Right here, for instance, we are saying bad request, ID must be greater than one. So we are actually trying to help out and explain to the outside world that you guys need to send right data to us or else we won't accept it. But we can do even better because right now we're working with um, a clean architect. So we have the core, the main part of our framework. And what if we started validating in there? Pretty much meaning that we wanted to start validate in our service. Then our service will start changing and be very powerful for any system that we're going to use our core setup for, right? So let me try and show you what I mean. So when we're creating an order right here, I'll just jump into that function in the service. When we are creating an order, right now that a few things can go wrong. And you just have to start thinking what can go wrong right here? What, can, what kind of issues can we get when we try to create an order? And there's one very important thing that I just talked about. You cannot create an order if the customer is null. So if customer is null, and I would even say or the order's customer dot ID is less than or equal to zero, then we have a problem, right? That's not allowed. That's not a customer in our system. So I'm going to throw a new invalid and let's just say invalid data exception, just to pick something. And the invalid data that you're sending, I'm just going to explain to you that to create order, you need a customer. So that's step one. Now, so now I explain to the system that if something, if, if you try to create an order right here, but you don't put in customer information, not going to happen. I'm going to throw an exception in your face. But I have another validation that we can put in here. If order dot customer. Now we know he has an ID, right? So we can try and check that ID. How we do that? Well, we can actually use the customer service just to make a validation that this customer exists in the database. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add up here. I'm just going to add an access to the I customer repository, just like we did earlier with, um, with, the, with the order repository inside the customer service. So I'm doing the exact same thing right here. So I'll just say customer repo. There we go, equals customer repository, there we go. And I'll make a local variable of that, and I'll actually make it read-only. Now, we can go and fix the rest of the code later. You should you should start fixing code like this and say, oh, this also needs to be read-only. Oh, maybe this shouldn't be called repository. Maybe this should be called, let's just refactor, rename this. You're always allowed to refactor as long as you don't, you're not breaking any code, and I'm sure I'm not right here. So let's call this auto repo, auto repo. There we go. There we go. So you're always allowed to refactor code as long as you make it better than what it was. Good. So now we have the customer repo available, pretty much meaning that I can do an if check right here and say if um, customer read by ID and just pass in the order customer ID. Now I know it's there now because if I get to this point and I didn't hit this invalid exception right here, I know I have a customer. But what if he is null, right? I didn't find him in the database. Then I can throw another exception right here a new invalid or there's maybe there's a not found exception we can throw that as well but I'm just going to throw an invalid data exception here as well there's so many exceptions to pick from you can really you can really start just reading out the, on the exceptions I'm not I'm not that I'm not that hung up on what kind of exception you're throwing so let me just um, say right here customer not found I just want to prove a point here I don't want, I don't care about the exception types right now so customer not found there we go. So now I've thrown two different exceptions before I even start trying to create this guy, right? So if I get to this point, that means that I can actually create it. I could also start adding simple exceptions like saying if customer, um, sorry, if order dot order date equals null, that shouldn't be allowed either, right? So I'll say again, throw new invalid order exception right here. And I would say um, order needs a order date. Now the cool thing here, the very cool thing here is that I can start unit testing create order. And I can say if I send in an order without a customer, boom, I expect an exception. If I send in an order without a customer in the database, boom, I expect an exception, right? I can start doing some crazy stuff. Good. So now we have this available. Let's try and jump into the controller boot because we need to do something else. In the controller, we need to now guard ourselves. So we'll kind of wrap this in a try cat. So we'll say try, right? And we'll actually double tap and it'll automatically create a catch for me. So we'll try to return this guy like this. And we'll actually add it inside an OK because if this happens, everything is OK. It's created. And then we'll catch down here 
right? We'll catch an exception down here and say if we do bad, then we'll just return a bad request. For now, bad request. And we'll put in um, the exception right here, message. There we go. So now I've pretty much got it myself, not in the controller, but I've actually got it myself one layer uh, lower inside my core, so I can actually start unit testing that part. Let's try and see what happens. If we jump into Postman, there we go. And let's actually try and create an order just to show you guys it still works. There we go, we create an order, but what if we start putting in stuff? Let's, let's say we put in a customer without any ID. Send. To create an order, you need a customer. Very informative. What if I completely remove this guy? I don't even have a customer in here. Try and send. You get the same exception. What if I go in and I actually go in here and I say, let's put in an order with ID 5, right? I say orders again, send, custom not found. Oh my God, you're getting validations back. You're getting information back. I know now as the user of your REST API, hmm, maybe I should just put in one. Yay, you did it, man, you did it. You just created an order. So now we pretty much made a very strong post request right here that's very informative. If we fail, we try catch and we then explain exactly to the user of my REST API what went wrong. Perfect stuff, perfect stuff. As the final thing right here, I just want to jump into the order service and explain why this is valuable because you're going to unit test all of this. So now you can unit test what happens if I don't send in a customer? What happens if I actually don't find a customer? And yes, with mocks we can actually test this as well. And then in the end, what happens if we don't have an order date? What happens if we don't have a first name of customer? Whatever you want to do, you can test that now, but make it in the core so that you can make unit tests and make sure that the core works of your application. That's it for this lesson. See you next time. Have fun.